welcome back here's the story so far we're given the letters of the word independence and in the last video we covered these questions in this video we're going to tackle this challenge one which says find the number of arrangements where there are always three letters between p and i but before we get started here's a very quick recap to find the total number of rearrangements we assumed that all of these letters are all distinct and then we made room for correction we got 16.6 lakh ways to find the number of arrangements where we had words starting with p we pinned down p we fixed p and then arranged the remaining 11 to find the number of words that start with p and end with i we fixed p and fixed i and then arranged the remaining 10 to find the number of words where vowels are always together we bundled all the vowels we figured out the number of ways and then we unbundled and made room for correction and finally to find the number of words where the vowels are never together we subtracted from the total number of words the number of words where they are always together and now let's tackle the real kicker the challenge problem here's what we have we have i n d e p e n d e n c e and we need to make sure that i and p have three letters between them let's take a look at a few examples now these three letters could all be vowels here's an example in this scenario all three of them are e's the words that we are looking for could look something like this they could also all be consonants we can have something like this as well where all three of them are consonants they could be a mixed bag they could be vowels and consonants between i and p this is how it looks like one of the examples what else could be happening well i and p could also switch places and still be three letters apart you can swap p with i this is something that you'll get p comes here and i comes here and our words don't have to start with p or i this arrangement could also be somewhere in the middle in fact they could be anywhere so this is also a possibility and maybe there are many more cases to consider seems like everything is on fire there's so much going on that you might feel like running away from this problem now i'm not giving any life advice but here's something that usually works for me in similar math problems when you have a problem that's too big to handle i'd say run away or wish that the problem didn't exist and then focus on other things for a while and when we are beginning to have things under control we can turn around come back and give it another shot this is the approach that will follow for this problem so the problem seems too big to handle let's run away let's imagine that the problem doesn't exist hang in there with me let's imagine that the problem doesn't exist this condition this constraint is the main problem let's imagine for a while that p and i don't exist p and i vanish away when they vanish this constraint three letters between p and i also vanishes with them if we don't have p and i how can we have letters between p and i and with this constraint all the scenarios all the cases go away this is how the world looks like when p and i don't exist so we had a problem and we imagined it away in this world it's just these other letters and they're all free to move around our job was to arrange all of these letters and we were given a constraint even without the constraint we still have to arrange these letters right let's pick things up that are relatively easy to handle let's arrange these letters without worrying about p and i all right this is what we have we have 3 plus 4 7 plus 3 10 10 letters and we have some repetitions let's assume that they're all different if they're different this is what we'll get but we'll make room for correction and this is what we'll get after the correction we'll have a total of 12600 words without worrying about p and i now that we have made some progress do you think we are ready to give this another shot it still seems like a big task so let's take it step by step now 12600 seems like a very big number we can't deal with all of these cases but let's pick a specific case and for a while let's focus on only that here's one of the ways in which we can arrange these remaining letters can we try making room for p and i without changing the order Let's make some space for P and I. I can shift this N to the left side, and I can shift these six letters to the right side, and make some space for P and I. So let's do that. Shifting N here, we have E and D making space here between N and E, and there's some room here after D, and then we shift these six to the side. Okay, now we have some room for P and I. Let's bring them back. Let's squeeze them in. We have I here, and we have P here. So after a very long time we have our first arrangement where i and p have three letters between them beautiful 
But wait, they could also switch places. We have put I here and P here, but they can also switch places. P could be here and I could be here without changing the order. This gives us our second arrangement where P and I have three letters in between them. We are already making a lot of progress. So what should we do next? Let's stay with this specific arrangement for a little bit longer. Only focusing on this arrangement, in how many ways can we make space for P and I? So a smaller, simpler, solvable question is, for this arrangement, what are the number of ways to make some space for P and I? Think about it. Let's list our options down. We can start with a blank. We can have the first one as a space and then have three letters. And then we can leave the fifth one as well and fill in the remaining ones. Or we can have the first letter and keep the second box empty, fill in the next three letters, skip the sixth one and then add back the remaining ones. Or we can add the first two, leave the third one empty, add three more, leave the seventh one empty and add back the remaining. And we can keep sliding this. We can keep the fourth one empty and the eighth one empty and fill in the remaining. Or we can keep the fifth one empty and the ninth one empty and fill in the remaining. Or we can keep the sixth one empty and the tenth one empty and fill in the remaining. Let's keep going. We can have the seventh one empty and the eleventh one empty and fill in the remaining. And there's one more case. We can have the eighth one empty and the last one empty and fill in the remaining. So without changing the order, in how many ways can we make space for P and I? Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. There are 8 ways to make space in a specific arrangement for P and I. And with this, we have all the necessary pieces to solve our problem. Now let's really put it all together. We have these letters from the word independence and our job here is to figure out the number of ways in which we can arrange these letters such that there's always 3 letters between P and I. It's a very complex task, it's a very complex job. And remember from the first video, Fundamental Principles of Counting, whenever you have a complex job, it's always a good strategy to break it down into simpler tasks. So let's do that here as well. The first thing that we can do is, we can arrange the rest of the letters in any order. But that's only part of the job. We have to do this and we have to make some space for P and I. And even that is not enough. Once we have arranged the rest of the letters and we have made some space, what we also need to do is, we have to add back P and I, which means we have to also let them switch between each other. And once all three of these tasks are done, we will have all possible arrangements where P and I have three letters between them. Alright, so let's do that. This first one, arranging the rest of the letters, well, we have already done that. We have 12,600 ways to do this. But this is only the first part. We have to do this and we have to make some space for P and I. For every single one of these 12,600 arrangements, we have 8 ways to make space for P and I. We have to do this and we have to do the third part. We have to let them switch between each other. We have to add back P and I. And there are two ways to do that. We can put I first and then P or we can put P first and then I. So there are two ways to do the third part. And now it's time for drum roll. Multiplying these three gives us our final answer 216,000 ways. This is the total number of ways in which you can arrange the letters of the word independence such that this complex condition, in fact, this seemingly complex condition that doesn't seem like that complex anymore because we have now learned how to break it down into its individual parts. This condition holds true that P and I have three letters between them. And that's pretty much it. I genuinely hope that you enjoyed working on this problem as much as I did.